In this video, I'll be teaching you how to set up our video intercom devices with DSS Pro. First thing you're going to want to do is download Config Tool. We'll be using Config Tool to configure the devices to then add them to DSS. So go to DawaWiki.com, scroll down to our software, and download Config Tool. Once Config Tool is downloaded and installed, you're going to want to open up Config Tool. and it should automatically do a search for the devices on the network. As you can see, I'm gonna have two VTOs and one VTH. I have our apartment style VTO four series, and I also have a Villa Station VTO two series. I'll also be using the VTH five series. First things first, we wanna initialize the devices. Now the VTOs and the VTHs use different password requirements. So we need to initialize them at, at separate times. So VTO is going to require an eight character alphanumerical. So we'll hit both the VTOs, select initialize, and select initialize one more time. We'll use admin123 for our password to make it nice and easy. And it's going to ask us to enter an email. Now for the tutorial sake, I'll go ahead and uncheck it, but it's highly recommended to enter an email so you can reset the password. We're going to want to hit next. Once the devices are initialized, you're going to want to hit finish. You will now see the status change to initialized. We now want to do the same thing, but for the VTH. So we'll check the VTH, hit initialize, hit initialize one more time. This time it's going to be a six digit password. So I'll just use one, two, three, four, five, six. And same thing with the email, enter an email. We're gonna hit next. Once we have a check mark, we're gonna hit finish. So now we should see our VTO devices all say initialized. Apparently they're using the same IP address due to the default IP. So we wanna make sure we add them to the local network. My local network is dot 50. So I'll first need to change the password. So I wanna change the VTOs first. Admin123 for search settings. That's gonna allow me to go into the VTOs and change the IP address. So we'll start off with the apartment style VTO. I'll do 192.6.50. We'll start at three since I know that's available. For the next VTO, I'll do five. We now want to change the IP address to the VTH. Since it requires a different password, I need to go back into search settings and type in the password of the VTH. Now we can go ahead and hit edit and change the IP address. Okay. Once the IP addresses are changed, I'm going to do refresh and make sure that it properly took. From here, we want to go down to building config. And we want to set up our global parameters first. And here we're going to want to decide if the server is going to be the VTO or DSS Express. Since we're adding it to DSS Express, our DSS is going to be our SIP server. So we're going to select Express DSS. Server port by default is going to be 5080. I recommend to check your DSS server services and make sure that the intercom services is 5080. By default, it should be 5080, but for some reason, Windows uh, detected a conflict, it might change. Next, you need to enter the IP address of the DSS server. In my case, it's 192.168.50.29. The server username is going to be the system login information of your DSS. So it's going to be system server password is going to be whatever password you initialize DSS with. SIP domain and register password, you wanna leave default, do not change that. And next is the VTO username, and password, and VTH username and password. This is gonna allow config tool to log into these devices and change the SIP configuration. So our VTO password was admin123. So I'll type in admin123. And our VTH password is 123456. So I'll type that.
Once that's entered, you want to hit OK. And now these two options will be highlighted blue, Add Node and Association. We're going to then want to select Add Node to Create a Project. On the top left, you're going to see your building, unit, and floor. You want to make sure all three of these are checked. By default, they should be checked, but if they're not, make sure they check them. The building unit should start at 1, so we can leave it as that. Our floor is going to start at 1. This is telling us the amount of floors that we have in the building. And room is going to be telling us the amount of rooms that we have per floor. The first option is going to tell us the number the floor starts at. And then the second number is telling us the quantity of floors or rooms. So in this case, just to have a visual expl explanation, we're going to do five floors. And we're going to have three rooms per floor. The extension is going to be the amount of VTHs we have per room um, if, or extensions. If you select zero, then you're only going to have one VTH, which is going to be the main VTH. If you select one, that means you're going to have the main VTH plus an extension. So you want to make sure that you select one or zero, or if you don't have any extensions per room, we'll select zero. Next, we're going to select the amount of VTOs we have. So we have an apartment style VTO. So we're going to select unit VTO main. We also have a villa station VTO that we're going to be tying to one of the VTHs. So we're going to select Villa Station Main. Once your project is completed, we're going to hit OK. Here we can hit select the unit, which is going to be our building. And then here we can see each floor and each room. Within each room, you'll see the amount of Villa Stations or VTH. In this case, we only have the main or the host VTH which is going to be uh, no extension. At this point, we're going to want to associate our devices. So our main VTO is going to be the apartment style VTO, the VTO 4202. So we're going to check the VTH, the VTO, select unit VTO main, and hit association. Next, we're going to select room number one. We're going to associate our Villa Station VTO and Villa Station main, and hit association one more time. Next, we want to select our VTH. So since I want this Villa Station to call our current VTH, you want to select VTH and then select host and association. Now remember, you can only check one at a time to associate to each location. So be sure to check only the serial number for the device and then to whatever you're associating it with. At this point, our project is complete. We can now go to the Association tab list, select all the devices, and hit Config. Config tool is now going to attempt to log into each device and enter the SIP configuration for the devices. If everything's successful, you should see check marks on right next to the serial number with a pop-up saying configuration operation completed. If for some reason you have an error, you'll have you'll see an exclamation. You can hover over the exclamation to click on it and see the error. If you get a password error, you want to go to global parameters and make sure that the password is correct. At this point, the devices will reboot, so I'll be pausing the video and I'll continue once they're done rebooting. Okay, the device has just finished rebooting. I'm gonna go to modify IP. I'm gonna hit refresh just to make sure that all the devices are online. And yes, they are. Our next step is adding the devices to DSS and making sure that we can communicate with them. So now we wanna open up DSS client. and log into our DSS. From here, we want to go down to the Configuration tab, Devices, 
and add them to the department that you would like. I have created a department called video intercom. So I add all three of our devices on here. You can also, you can either manually add them or you can do a search in the bottom and add them individually. So let's add the modular VTL first. Admin one, two, three. The Villa station second. Admin one, two, three. And our VTH, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I forgot to put him to the correct department. So if you did that as well, you're going to want to go down to the pencil icon for each of the devices, select the organization and throw them into the proper department. Okay. Once your devices are added to DSS, you should see the status online. If for some reason you get an error, if you get a building unit mismatch, you want to go down to home. You want to go down to video intercom, residence config, and you want to check building and unit. If it's, if it's already checked, then you did your node incorrect. You would need to go back to building config. Under node, you would want to make sure that you checked building and unit. But if everything was successful, you can now go down to access management, video intercom, call center. You're going to get a pop-up indicating that the system user has multi-client enabled. So if you do want to receive calls, you're going to want to create a new user with multi-client disabled. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But at this point, you should see SIP online for all the devices. We can initiate the two-way talk by clicking the button. This will bring up the live view. The end of the call. For each device. The end of the call. Now, to receive a call in DSS, you would need to dial six eights. So to do that, you would either need to go to the modular VTO and con you can click on the speed dial where it gives you the center management icon, or you can dial 888-8888. Again, that's six eights. I'll do that now. And you can now receive a call. As for our Villa station, we link that to our VTH, which is the 101. So if I click on the Villa station VTO, I should call my VTH. Calling now. Please wait a moment. And as you can hear, the VTH is ringing. The line is busy now. In order to receive calls properly, you want to make sure the multi-client option is disabled on DSS clients. To do that, we want to go to home, go down to the configuration tab, go to user. You want to create a role. Once you create a role, you're going to hit add to create a user. And this option multi-client login must be disabled. So we can do test. For the tutorial, I'm just going to set it up as an administrator, but you would want to make sure you create your role. So now we can log out. And log back in with our user. Once logged in, we can go to access management, intercom, call center, and we no longer get the error.
That is how you set up video intercom with DSS Pro. Thanks for watching.